Ask your students, what, what is a, a, an effective, useful safety report? What style would it be written in? What elements would you expect to see? And what kind of language would you use to, in, to write it in? And the answer to that is pretty important. Here's another suggestion relating to the report. Think of the very standard journalistic style in, in a newspaper. Who, what, when, where, why. And perhaps that would be a, a template for, for reporting. Ask your students to design a reporting form that would be suitable for what they have identified using their cameras or the Mark I human eyeball. Trainers, ask your students to role play a situation. One, one student would be the reporting conscientious employee, the other student might be the safety officer. Write the report, send it to the safety officer. Safety officer may have some questions. What information might be included that isn't here? Is it a good report? What's missing? Share it. One of the basic elements of SMS is, of course, risk analysis. A risk analysis can be highly useful because it gives you some indication of how serious a risk can be. And yet, are your students familiar with this? No, probably not. But in fact, there are ways you can show them that they use a risk analysis every day. And one example would be when you get up in the morning and you're going to go f decide whether or not you're going to go to work or go flying or go anywhere, and you look out the window. So what decisions do you make when you look out the window and what are you looking for? Well, your students can probably answer that one. You're looking at the weather. And what difference would that make? Well, it dictates what clothes you're going to put on and whether or not you're able to go flying or even if you're able to go to work some days. So how about asking your students to identify some very simple things that we do on a daily basis, whether they're social things or very practical things, that require one of those instant speed of light risk analysis situations. And is there really much difference in terms of risk analysis of that sort and a risk analysis in a safety issue? And the answer is no. The difference is that we document differently and we're much more conscious than we are in our terms of our own personal lives. So how about some situations then using the reports that, that you've generated and written and perhaps rewritten with the, in that role play we discussed earlier. Now, let's do a risk analysis and take the situation again and working in groups of two or perhaps even three people, can you see some risk factors that might have been missed? But sharing this information amongst the students would develop the concept of what risk analysis really is and help us to understand how we use that on a daily basis in our own lives and definitely in the, being a professional in SMS. Ask your students where they might find some examples of a risk analysis in aviation and perhaps even a risk matrix. Not much doubt. Large aviation companies use these all the time. It's part of their business. It's part of the presentation they make to the public to show that they are very concerned about safety. Many of these are online and very easily accessed and downloaded and printed. And what about a comparison? Try a comparison of the risk assessments that other companies use and which one do you think would be most appropriate for the situation you're in? Can you establish some criteria that you think are important in any kind of risk analysis? Perhaps even make a personal risk matrix. How about for that trip when you want to visit your mother in, in Ottawa and you live in Quebec City? Well, what time of year is it? Do a risk analysis. How about planning a risk analysis for a cross-country flight? Many of your students are going to be student pilots themselves, they'll be working on a license. And of course we do it because we check the weather. But are we thinking in terms of a risk analysis? And are we basing our decisions on the results of that risk analysis? And if we become more conscious of what we're actually doing, then we start to get control over the process of safety. And that leads to far better safety decisions. Ask your students to put themselves in a management position. One of the jobs of a manager in aviation is to investigate and to identify the results of information. For example, do we have a trend in a series of reports? And after all, what is a trend anyway? And how could you use a trend? Best of all, what decisions can you make from a trend? Because when you get students involved in the decision-making process, we're making them far more aware of their environment and reminding them of their responsibility. And a good SMS system is a good training ground for pilot decision-making. 
I think one thing, trainers, that you'll have to deal with is the whole concept of non-punitive reporting. And how do you actually do that? Because I, I think in the past, it's a case of if something goes wrong, you, you make it right and you hope you don't get hung for it. Uh, and very often things don't get examined. There's an example of how the culture has to change. So how do you actually change it in that respect? Well, how about some role plays? And how about actually role playing a, a situation in which you've been involved personally, in which perhaps you've fouled things up? And yes, you're at fault, it went wrong. But maybe it's not just you, maybe there's a little more to it. And how could we change the way we do business to make that right? So if, if you have a group of people, and, and it sounds like a true confessions kind of thing, but it works. And uh, there aren't too many people that have been in aviation for any length of time that haven't made some kind of a mistake. So why not role play that? Or use a videotape and tape it, play it back, probably get a few laughs out of it, and maybe a little bit of embarrassment. Ask your group when they see that on tape or they see it at the front of the room, uh, what elements went into that? Why was that mistake made? Was it just somebody being careless? Or were there a number of traps that, uh, by the way we do things, led to a, a poor outcome instead of a, a good outcome, a happy ending? And how could we change it? So we're, we're using some dramatization to present a situation. And let's uh, dramatize it again this time. How, what do we need to do? What could we have incorporated into our actions? so that the outcome would have been much more positive and the one we want. Uh, I think people are used to uh, cut and run, cover it up and, and run away. And it takes a little practice to change that culture. And in our SMS training, the initial training and the recurrent th uh, training, I think it's re really important that we emphasize this. If people are genuinely confident that they can report and it's not going to come down on them like a ton of bricks, they're much more likely to report. It's as simple as that. One of the obvious important aspects of SMS is the training itself, and here we are in the middle of the training process. And that's something you're going to lead. You're going to be the flag waver for SMS. Enjoy yourself. But how about some incentives for students to participate, even in the training at this stage and later on, too? Could you create a Monday morning AM cell phone safety quiz? so that everybody gets the same text message at 10 o'clock and it's going to ask a question about SMS. Probably a simple answer. It's not the answer that's important. It's the participation. And the more we can get them involved, the more likely we are to be successful in making that shift towards an SMS culture in our organization. Culture has to change in order for SMS to take hold and be successful. It's got to become part of our genetic code almost in terms of how we operate on a daily basis. Trainers, we have to appeal to that younger generation that's coming up very quickly. And there's some, of the, some ideas we can use right away that are pretty simple. They're part of the lives of what we call Gen Ys, and those include things like the use of video cameras to record events and to share them online, the use of discussion groups online. We have to make preparation to be part of that in order to make this real so that they'll buy in and make it theirs because that's the only way we're going to get success.